Hey guys, we're gonna sing He Is Our God. Join with us. What's up you guys? Just showing you this little rivery thing here out in nature, which is something that you should get into if you haven't over this time. I might be getting bit by snakes by the end of this chapel today. Um, I just wanted to bring you a quick message about um, monuments. And that's why I wanted to show you these stones that are here. Uh, these stones are big. They're limestone. They're probably super heavy. But in the book of Joshua, we find out a little bit about monuments. But first, I want to start by saying this. Have you ever traveled somewhere with your friends or your family here in the state or out of state or uh, out of country and uh, gone to someplace cool? And what was the first thing you did when you went there? You took a picture, right? Maybe not the first thing, but you did it. And you either took a selfie, let's say, in front of the Eiffel Tower or the New York skyline. And you took a picture of yourself in front of the thing. So really... By going to it, you accomplished one thing. You looked at it, so you saw it with your own eyes, and then you snapped a picture. Now, why did you do that? Well, I think that people snap pictures of uh, monuments and things and of themselves at them as a way of bearing testimony to the fact that they were there in the first place. Look, we saw the Eiffel Tower. You don't believe me? Let me show you. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. And in the same way, 
the people in Joshua's time did that, Israel did that, and I think they did it to accomplish about the same purpose. People in Bible times often set up memorials, they placed rocks on things, they built altars, but they did these things to, to accomplish specific purposes, but specifically for the monument itself, the purpose was almost always to remember. Remember this place, remember what God did here. And so in Joshua, we find that God speaks to Joshua and says, hey, look, I want you to take the altar of God, the Ark of the Covenant, not the altar, the Ark of the Covenant, and I want you to have it pass before all the people so that they can see that and be reminded that the presence of God is with you. And this is right as God had prepared Israel to um, go into the land that he had provided for them in Canaan. And they're freaking out because they're on one side of the Jordan River, which is much different than this little spring that I showed you. During this time, it was when the Jordan was overflowing. It was full of water because of all the fresh spring rain, I guess. I, I don't know, I, I don't know. But it was, it says in the scripture in Joshua three that it was deep. And I mean, it says that it was overflowing its boundaries. And when the Jordan was overflowing its boundaries, you can know that that meant the water was going fast and it was gonna pretty much take away anyone or anything that tried to just wade through it. It wasn't passable. But they needed to go in because God was gonna do this thing for them. So Joshua organizes all the tribes and he has the priests lead the Ark of the Covenant before them. And the second that the priest's feet touched the water, um, it receded. It stopped upstream and downstream so that they could stand in it on dry land. And so, just like in the Red Sea event, water was parted and the people of God walked across on dry land. The Ark of the Covenant was held by the priests in the middle of that river for the time that they went across. Now you might think that this was like, you know, a hundred people, a thousand people, how many? Well, at this time, the census that had been taken before Israel walked into Canaan, there were over 600,000 able-bodied um, men who would be able to fight if they needed to, like at Jericho, let's say, um, and their families. So that means that there were well over 600,000 people, probably more in the neighborhood. I read uh, estimates in my fancy Bible software that said somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 million people. This was no small event. And they crossed over. Now let's say you're a kid, seven through 12 years old, let's say. When you walked through, you could barely describe what you were seeing right then. But let's say you're that kid at the age of 30 now. When you look back on that event, don't you think that some of them were probably like, did that really happen? Did I just dream this? Well, so Joshua has all of the tribes, each a, a person from each tribe take a stone, probably kind of like some of these stones I showed you earlier, and carry it on his shoulders. And with those stones, they built a monument. Uh, either in or right next to the Jordan. And at the time that Joshua, the book, was written, it was still standing. People would take their kids and they'd say, hey, I wanna show you this. I wanna show you this so that you'll know that even though you may not have been alive at the time that this happened, it really happened. God was there and I saw it with my own eyes. So, seniors, I know that this has been a strange year and you wouldn't have wished it upon yourself, but this is your senior year. Many of you have pictures already of the moment, senior pictures. Some of you have or will have pictures of you standing six feet apart from everyone at your graduation parties, but you're capturing the events. When you are 30 years old, would you look back at this moment in time and ask, did we really win state? Or did I really learn all that stuff? Or you might ask, did we really spend the better part of the second semester of my senior year in self-quarantine? But the question that I want you to ask is, where did you see God in this time? 
how was your faith bolstered or what were the struggles that you went through that made you more dependent on God during this time in your life? For all of the students and families, you're welcome to do this as well. I would encourage you this week to build a memorial. You could do that by either going the you know 21st century route and taking a selfie of yourself in front of something that reminds you of the presence of God or in front of something where you actually experienced the presence of God. Or you could take some rocks and build a monument in your backyard or your neighbor's backyard. I'm just kidding, don't do that. Um, build a monument somewhere where it doesn't destroy your parents' property or public property because that's illegal. And build a monument specifically for the purpose of remembering that God has met us here. He is with us and he will never leave us or forsake us. Just like the people in in Joshua walking across the Jordan River, we need to be reminded that these things really happened. This year, God was with us. And what that'll do is every time you go back to it in the future, you'll remember that God is still with you. He's never gonna leave you or let you out of his sight. All right, well, I hope this is an encouragement. Um, love to get to see you guys. Um, through the little teeny aperture on my, um, um, this phone. Uh, have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye.